to be teaching and kids. I'm a bit nervous. Have you ever done anything that made you nervous? No. 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 Well, I think it'd be quite good if we were to maybe stretch our legs again a little bit and find out some of the things that make us nervous. So I want everybody to jump to their feet again. You're on your way to school and you drop your homework or your reading book or something like that in a big puddle and it's ruined. And you have to, no, no, not yet, not yet, not yet. Okay. You have to go into school and tell your teacher, nervous or not nervous. Go. <laughs> All right, all right, so some people nervous, some people not nervous. Are you ready? Back to the center. What's up, everybody? My name is Kenneth, and this is my friend Blue. Hey there, my name's Blue, and this is my friend Kenneth. I just said that. Oh, right. Uh, my bad. I'm a little nervous. Uh, it's the first time in front of a camera. No, it's okay. Today we're talking about this word right here, authority. Everybody say that after me. Say authority. Authority. Say it one more time, a little louder. Authority. Authority. Now, you probably have heard this word, but do you know what it really means? Uh, I think so. You should probably tell me just to be safe. Authority is the people God has put over you to help you and guide you through life. So, like my parents? Yep. And my teachers? You got it. And my pet rock? What? No. But my parents and teachers are older than me, and so is my pet rock. It's probably like a bazillion years old. And you said everything that's older than me is my authority. Well, no, it... It's gonna be kinda hard to do what my pet rock says. You know, because it's a rock. Yeah, 
I know. It doesn't have a mouth. Hang on a second. Just because something is older than you doesn't mean it's your authority. It has to be a person too, like your parents or your teachers or a police officer, people like that. Oh, gotcha. So authority is the people God has put over you to help you and guide you. And now you now you know what that word means. Do 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 you know no no do you know what that word means? I do. Do 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 you know no no do you know what that word means? I Three people tell me someone in authority in your life. Your parents. Your parents. Henry. Um, your mom. Your mom, okay. A doctor, okay, really good. One more. Yeah. The government. The government, I mean, that's an interesting one for just having gone through our elections. Okay. We're going to, starting a new series today, and we're going to learn a whole lot more about what authority means. In fact, the big idea for this series is that God is the ultimate authority. We're going to learn about a man called Samuel. Anybody here called Samuel? Yeah. Or do you have a friend or a brother called Samuel? Your friend called Samuel? Yeah? My granddad. Your granddad called Samuel? I'm Frank called Samuel. Your friend Benjamin? Okay. I'm Frank called Sam. Sam? Okay. Your name probably Sam. Okay. Yeah. Your cousin? Okay. You have something you know called Samuel? Yeah. Yeah. Friend that the parents are called It's quite a common name. We're going to learn about Samuel. And we're going to learn about how God showed up in his life and the lives of other people around him to show them that he has the ultimate authority. Now we read the story about Samuel in the Bible. That's God's gift to you and we know that we can trust it and it's right and true. Samuel even has a book in the Bible named after him. But I need your help to tell the story. So, once upon a time, there was a man called Elkanah, and he had two wives. One was called Hannah, and one was called Peninnah. Peninnah was a mummy, and she had children. But Hannah, she didn't have any children at all. Each year, they would leave their home in a place called Ramah and they would go to a place called Shiloh, where Eli the priest is, to worship God. <coughs> now Shiloh's a bit like Newton Ards. In the same way that we come to TLC in Newton Ards to worship God, people would have gone to Shiloh to worship God and Eli the priest would have helped them to know what to do. But as they would go, Peninnah and her children used to tease Hannah and laugh at her because she didn't have any children. So point out her laugh at her. Well, Hannah didn't. Oh. He was nice. <laughs> 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 point out Hannah laugh at her. Oh, so you didn't have any children. Ah. <laughs> okay. uh, All right. I need Peninnah and the children to sit down. Thank you. No, please go back down to your seat, sir. Okay. Super. Thank you so much. Okay. So, Elkanah, or Hannah would be very sad. And she'd be crying because of all that Penilla would have done to her. And then Kelly used to say to her, Why are you always so sad? We got her to ask her question. Why are you always so sad? Why are you always crying? Why can you not eat anything? Thank you, Alcana. You can sit down. How you stay there? Thank you, Alcana. One time, when they had finished their meal at Shiloh, Hannah went to the temple where Eli is okay, and she started to pray and she was crying as she was praying 
But she made a very important solemn promise to God. She said to God, if you give me a son, I will give him back to you to serve you for the rest of his life. But as she was standing praying and crying, her lips were moving, but there was no sound. So move your lips as if you're talking, but there's something. Eli was watching her, and he thought she was drunk, so he was really cross. Let me see a cross face, Eli. Really cross. But Hannah said to him, no, I'm not drunk. I have been praying here for a long time because I am so very sad. So Eli said to her, okay, I want you to go back home and may the God of Israel give you what you have asked him for. Hannah went back home to Elkanah and she felt a bit better and she was able to have some food. Thank you very much, Eli and Hannah. I want to give everybody a round of applause for help yourself. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, boys, you got me? Short while after they went back home, God answered Hannah's prayer, and she had a baby son. My name, Alwyn, means white footprint. Do you know what your name means, anybody? Uh, my name is appointed one. Appointed one? Okay, I like that. I don't know. Okay, go. I'm not sure. Okay. All right, so our names have meanings, okay? You listening? You listening? Hannah, she called her baby son Samuel, because Samuel means God has heard. So the next year came around again, and off they were going to go to Shiloh to make the daily sacrifice to worship God there. Didn't mean they only went to church once a year. This was just a special church they went to once a year at this time. But Hannah said to Elkanah, I'm not going to go this time. I'm going to wait until Samuel's a bit older, and then I will take him with me, and he will then stay in the temple with Eli. So when Samuel was about three years old, they brought him to the temple. Hannah found Eli and she said to him, Do you remember me? I'm the woman who was standing here praying and crying. I asked God to give me a son. I wanted it so much. And he answered my prayer. He gave me what I asked him for. Now I'm sure Eli was really pleased to hear that God had answered Hannah's prayer. And Hannah then told Eli, I've been a promise to God, and I promised him that if he gave me a son, that I would give my son back to him to serve him for the rest of his life. <coughs> and so they arranged for Samuel to stay in the temple with Eli. Samuel's birth was a miracle. What's a miracle? A miracle <coughs> is when something impossible happens. <coughs> When God makes something possible. Something impossible is made possible because of God. And Samuel's birth was a miracle. And Hannah loved God so much that she knew she needed to make sure that she fulfilled her promise to God and did what she needed, what he wanted her to do. To guide us in life. He gave us, God, sorry, is, has the most authority of all. He made us, he created us, and he wants to show us how to be, have the best possible life as his friend. God shows us what we need to do 
through the Bible and through other wise people. But the wisest person that ever lived was, of course, Jesus. Now, I know you remember who Jesus is. He is the perfect Son of God, and he came to this earth as a tiny baby, and then he grew up and showed us how to love other people and how to love God. We've just celebrated Easter. Hope you didn't eat too many Easter eggs. Okay. Because if you eat too many Easter eggs, you might be like the very hungry caterpillar and have a stomach ache. Okay. All right. So, at Easter time, at Easter time, at Easter time, we remember that Jesus died on the cross for our sin. He took the punishment for our sin, for our eye wakes. <coughs> he understood God's authority and he understood God's plan that would make us his friends and allow us to be his children. So Jesus was a great example. Hannah recognised God's authority and I'm going to read you another prayer that she said. She said, The Lord has filled my heart with joy. How happy I am because of what he has done. There is no one like our God. And that was the prayer that she prayed. It must have been very difficult for Hannah to leave her little son Samuel there in the temple with Eli. But Hannah knew that God knows what is best for us. And she also knew that she had made a promise to God and that she needed to keep that promise. Every single day, we have to make a choice. Are we going to do the things that we want or are we going to do what God wants? We have to make that choice every day. And some ways that we can listen to God's authority this week are to read our Bibles each day, because that is how God will talk to us. We can listen to the leaders in our life, like our parents, like our teachers, like our grannies. We can put other people first. So maybe we're going to let someone have a go, have a turn at something before us. Those sorts of things we can do. What do you think it would have been like for Hannah with Penina always laughing at her? I think it would have been pretty mean for her, wouldn't it? It would have been awful. I'm sure you're not really like that. It would have been awful. Are there things in your life that you really want? Now, I'm not talking about a PS4 or a new bike. Or PS5, whatever it is nowadays. Okay? I'm talking about things like, maybe you want to be a doctor when you grow up. Or maybe there's somebody in your family who is ill and you want them to get better. Or maybe, keep listening, maybe you want a really best friend. Or maybe you want to spend more time with your mom or dad. What you need to do... Boys, boys, okay. What you need to do is you need to pray to God and ask him for the things that you really want. And then you have to trust his timing. So you might have to wait for one day, or you might have to wait for years. That's hard, isn't it? Okay. Some of the things that we can do while we are waiting. We can keep talking to him. We can remember all the great things that he's already done for us. We can tell others about him and we can ask him to help us to be patient. And that's what I would love us to do just before we finish. I would like us to pray and to ask God to help us to be patient. So let's pray. Dear God, please help us to give you the ultimate authority in our lives. We know that you know what is best for us and that we can always trust you. 
Thank you for all the great things you have already done for us. Help us to be patient as we are waiting for you to answer our prayers. Thank you for listening so well. You're great.